you. When supervising a group of people that you've never met before, what is the path of least resistance to deal with issues that are just laid out before you that guide you towards the best solution, the path of least resistance within a mess of a situation? Were you inspired a little bit by the question before? Or was it already within you and did we just have good timing? Already in me. When you ask yourself, does the path of least resistance or the path of most allowance intrigue you at all? Does the idea, the notion, it really is true, that things are always working out for me, does that have resonance with you? Absolutely. Because if that really is a strong, knowing, often vibration within you, then you see these challenging situations as opportunities for understanding that you actually begin to develop an appetite for unless they are coming all at once and it's overwhelming so segment intending really helps because that way segment intending slows everything down so that not because you can handle it better but so that you can savor it more so do you want to give us an example of something my example may be I almost find these situations as fun I have somebody that's abusing their sick leave and I wasn't real familiar with the regulations of what to do with that person and they're given to me and I'm like okay this is kind of fun as an opportunity to learn the regulations and what to do with it yeah and there's fun within it but do I put energy into it early or let it go later that was really where my debate came from that like what how do I do I just let things be until they're brought up as an issue or do I address them early on well if we were standing in your physical shoes at the earliest awareness is when we would address it because that's when the energy is slower there's less momentum and it's easier for there to be a turnaround of something and so that awareness thing is helpful so give us a more precise example so what bothers you about that somebody's using their sick leave inappropriately and somebody is supervising you to supervise them? Correct. You hit it right there. I don't necessarily care when the user is sick leave. It's theirs to use. If you need to call off, call off. Somebody gets overtime out of it. Benefits everybody. But somebody higher up in the chain really gets concerned about it. I don't know why. But then they're telling me, oh, you've got to address this. And I'm like, it's okay. It's their time to use. And then you get blowback? Yes. We really like this conversation because... When Jerry first met us, he had so many questions, a lot of them like that, and would say, that's not your work. And you would say, well, it is my work. It's actually what I'm hired to do. But we would say, that's not your work. And Jerry would leave that. And then another, that's not your work. And finally, after hundreds, maybe thousands of questions like that, Jerry said, what is my work? What is my work? And that's when we really got specific about deliberate creation and about knowing what you want and then holding your thoughts in the direction of what you want. So let's say you've had an experience where someone is supervising you to supervise someone and you have more of a let's let things work themselves out sort of thing and you're looking for the path of least resistance rather than the rightness or the wrongness in it. And have any of you noticed even at the highest levels of your judiciary systems that there is a lot of debate about what's the right and what's the wrong it's really open to speculation and interpretation sort of makes you wonder why you ever tried to keep any rules doesn't it because everything feels the way it really is it's arbitrary because it's the law of attraction in action that's producing things and so if you can softly say this to yourself not to your supervisor but let this be something that you're holding in your thought process for a little while that you're not looking for the rightness or the wrongness in policies that have been established in order to what? Have smooth flow of things, have greatest production of things, have the happiest work environments. In other words, all the reasons for all those rules and rights and wrongs, they're well-intentioned. 
so what is the path of least resistance to that intention of us getting along of us getting the job done and so then when you think about it climbing all over somebody about something if you accuse anyone even a little kid especially a little kid if you accuse anyone of breaking a rule or doing something wrong you're gonna solicit defensiveness they're gonna shut right down and they're not gonna hear anything that you say and if you demand that they hear you they will get really good at deception because everyone is wired from source for freedom freedom to create and freedom to choose and so when you get in sync as a supervisor with these laws with this powerful way that it goes and you're not pushing back against your supervisor you're understanding that person's just doing their job and that's okay and I'm just doing my job in a different way and you're allowing them to feel the way they feel you're not evoking defensiveness from them by defending your position you're defending your position with universal energy you're in sync with source energy that is on the side of freedom on the side of free will on the side of opportunity to explore on the side of people figuring things out nobody wants somebody else standing over them and telling them what to do it steps all over your creative toes and so if you can stand in a sort of playful attitude keep it to yourself as best you can don't let your supervisor see it of the ingenuity that people are discovering in order to have everything they want they want the job they want the income they really do want to do well they also want to live a life they also want to have more things in their life than just that they're trying to take the path of least resistance Ooh, and you as a supervisor if you want to be a supervisor like your inner being is <clears throat> help them find the path of least resistance so if we're tuned with how we feel, I'm going to try to give a quick example for my last question here. Good. My daughter's seven years old. I've let her believe what she wants in reference, reference to religious things. A couple years ago, I was introduced to Seth, um, and I really like the material that I've read there. And she had an interest in going to a local church based upon some of her friends went there, and she has an interest in the church. And I take her to the church service, and she says... On the way home, I don't believe this. I don't believe the outline, whatever's there. She doesn't believe what's happening at church? The church and what the church is teaching. And I haven't guided her in any direction as to what the do, believe, say. Because I kind of have the idea that God is energy, everything is God. We're guided in how you're teaching us as far as our energy, our beliefs. Do you have any advice in that area? We would say to her something like this. You're really smart. I've noticed that. And if there's anything that I want you to know that I've noticed, I think you can trust the way you feel. And I don't know anything, say to her, that is all just right. There's wanted and unwanted in everything. And I really think that that's why we're here is so that we can sort of figure out what works for us. And I think we're also different because different things work for different ones. And I think that whatever it is that they're teaching in that church or that church or that church or that church or that church, I think it's all coming from a good place. And I just wouldn't ask anything to fit every place because every place is different. Now, to bring this really home in a strong way to you someone gave Jerry some Seth books that's how they got into all of this and Esther didn't want anything to do with it it was too weird for her <laughs> <laughs> and so he read the books himself and every now and again he'd read something that he thought might resonate with her and he'd read it and she'd say oh that sounds right and that sounds right that was the gentle beginning of all of this and so as Esther began allowing herself to allow those like you to have this experience that she thought was so weird she made Jerry promise he wouldn't tell anybody he kept that promise for a little while but not for very long and then it sort of caught on and then it started to feel better and better and better and better and better and then people would come and they would ask questions 
that they had heard from other teachers or other places and they would feel uncomfortable with our different approach to it and Esther would in privacy with us later say Abraham why are those other teachers lying to those people because they're telling them stuff that you're not telling us and we said if everyone were in exactly the same place then exactly the same teacher would be exactly perfect but people are all in different places asking different things standing in different points and so what we really want you to know so that you can find a way to express it to your sweet one is that your inner being her inner being knows right where she is in relationship to everything she wants and is calling her in this delicious path of least resistance into all that she is wanting to be and you can't be someplace that you're not in other words you are where you are that's why if you can get this if you can understand that someone that you encounter is where they are and don't fight where they are because where they are is all right their inner being understands where they are in relationship to where they want to be and everybody doesn't want to be where you want to be their inner beings are calling them in the path of least resistance to where they are wanting to be and if you can make that all right with yourself and help your little one for it to be all right with her oh what a glorious environment this becomes as people get to find their own way to who they are becoming and the reason that this is so important is because who you are becoming is a moving target do you know how you have evolved in the little bit of time that we've been here together today you're much more ready to allow yourself to receive the things that have been raining down around you that you've been resisting because you didn't really realize what you were doing with it and you didn't feel your worthiness or readiness a few hours ago as much as you do right now you have changed your point of attraction has shifted and everybody on the planet their points of attraction are shifted depending on what they're watching on television or what they're living or what they're observing but in all of that people are living launching rockets of desire becoming more than they currently are and being lovingly called to the path of most allowance or the path of least resistance by their inner being and anything that you can ever say to anybody that helps them more and more to understand how blessed they are how wise they are how worthy they are and how seen they are that's just the best thing that you can help anybody understand and after a little while someone might not feel so good in a place where somebody's setting down hard rules where they're trying to supervise the supervisor the supervisor the supervisor the supervisor where somebody that's not even doing the job somebody that's not even standing in that place is calling all the shots really really you think that's what non-physical energy is all about got it all figured out got it all figured out know exactly what you should want and how you should go about getting it and nothing else will do does that make any sense to you at all it doesn't that's oftentimes how it happens though if you like this video don't forget to subscribe we'll see you in the next